Hey guys, welcome to my shop for a long-awaited and much-anticipated episode about changing out the binding on this old 30s model Archcraft arch top. Now, there is a high level of technical expertise involved in this repair, so we are going to kick it up a notch. BAM! Okay, back to reality. In all seriousness, you should be able to tell that there are going to be some environmental sensitivities that go with making this repair. As manifest in my wearing of my Earth First shirt. That should be an indicator to you. Number two, I'm wearing my smart glasses. They make me smart. What's that? Oh, you don't think so? I hear you out there. You know what I think? I think you are a liar. As you can tell, I'm trying to be really serious because we're not playing around today. So, uh, let's get the normal folly and amusement that we do out of the way first. Don't forget to give me a like down below. And um, you're going to have to like this one because I'm going to take you up so many levels in so many ways you can't believe it. But, first... Let's get the matchbook of the episode out of the way. Sticking with an environmental theme, we have the San Diego Extermination Company where we kill to live. San Diego Extermination Company, kill to live. Isn't that profound? Next, I want to talk to you about a little bit of uh, input I got from one of my subscribers. Craig Clemens. Craig, I got your suggestion uh, and I'm listening to you, son. What Craig said is that my episodes are uh, awesome, which we all know that already. So let's get on to the part we may not have known. Craig gave me a suggestion that I might actually improve the lighting on my set. And Craig, uh, it is with the deepest uh, thanks and humility that I'm going to tell you I actually listened to you and we are going to do that this episode. I'm there for you, Craig. You see? You didn't fall in deaf ears. Okay, to bring you up to speed, I'm going to give you a link to a playlist where we've done some episodes on uh, getting this guitar ready for this binding replacement. It's There's going to be a link up there called the Fake Luthier, and then there will be another link up there to things we've done to this specific Archcraft guitar built by K uh, somewhere between 1933 and 1937. But we um, repaired this hole. Remember this one? And we fixed this crack along the side of the body in an episode that we also made spool clamps. Again, all that stuff is up there where that eye is popping up right about now. Okay, so we're going to get to the bench now and get this repair set up. Uh, get ready uh, to listen because we are going to cover some um, environmental hazards that accompany this kind of repair. So, we're also going to take a look at some parts we may need or supplies or things that we can even make ourselves to make this turn out because a guitar that has bad binding, nobody wants it except me or Troy Murrah. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so as always, we're going to have our bean bag set up for the body of the guitar. We're going to have one to support it up here where the neck meets the body. And then we've got a new addition to the shop, this neck rest or cradle. It works a couple of different ways. Uh, this way, this way, so you can adjust the height. It's made out of cork. We want to make sure that we have all of our tools ready. And the most important thing, our new lighting set up to properly illuminate the repair. We're ready for a guitar. Okay guys, let's back up a little bit before we get the guitar in here. Let's move this out of the way and go over some of the tools we're going to need. We need to, ahead of time, order some replacement binding and some adhesive that goes with that. And I will give you a link to where I got some of these supplies down below in the resources section. 
Okay, you'll remember from the last episode in which we repaired a hole here. Link right up there right about now that we cut a piece of the binding that we're going to use, which means you have to measure this right here and know what this binding is to order. You want to order it a tad bigger or taller, not so much that uh, it needs to stick out too much. I'm going to show you a tool we're, we made that we're going to trim this with, but in other words, that this sits down here. Remember when we made this, we made sure that when we cut it, there was nothing sticking out or burrs or the screw we put in was flush right there because if it's not it's going to give you a false reading here the more time you spend making sure that this is smooth and right the smoother your binding job is going to turn out so you'll need this again again piece of binding cut with uh, a screw put in it and flushed out next you're going to want to protect yourself i think you know these masks that's a really cool one course double up and you've always got your chick flick teal bandana cover up because this is serious stuff why well here's why the departmental committee on celluloid which is what the old binding is made out of appointed by the home secretary some 15 months ago to consider precautions necessary in the storage and use of this substance has recently issued a report and found out that this stuff is gelatinized nitrocellulose and camphor, cinnamomum camphorum for you arborists out there. And uh, it gives you some type blah, 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 blah. And it ignites very readily. I don't know about that because I've seen Troy Murrah uh, light up old arch tops with celluloid bindings and they don't spontaneously combust. Uh, give you an example right up there, right about now. But, and it burns with great rapidity and fierceness. Moreover, in certain cir circumstances, it may fire without direct application of flame. And then it releases these gases, chiefly carbon monoxide and nitric oxide with small proportions of hydrocyanic acid. That doesn't sound cool, does it? You know what? We need to cut here. I'm not sure you're taking this seriously. Okay, we need to back up a little bit because I don't think you're grasping the situation here. Now, I told you it should have been a hint to you that I have my Earth First shirt on and I come out of the oil fields. So you might just assume that because I come out of the oil fields, I'm not environmentally conscious. Well, you're wrong because, yeah, Earth First we'll drill the other planets later bingo gotcha back to the bench so by now you're thinking if i'm going to chip away this old celluloid stuff here because it's already falling apart and chunking out there you see that that i need to make sure that there is good ventilation and that i am going to keep uh using uh personal protection equipment PPE like this stuff here or a ventilator mask or whatever you have and that I'm going to keep the particles away from me by using the appropriate tool which in this case would be the world's smallest blower. No, hell no because this will put the particles up in the air where you'll be breathing them and they'll live on forever to infect you in some other way and you're going to get sick over a $100 guitar. Nope, there's a much better solution. And here it is. You saw it here first. The world's smallest vacuum. Yeah, you just put this next to your work. And you turn it on. Okay, in all seriousness, guys. They knew this. And when... The date on the article, 1914, and they still kept using it in guitars, believe that or not. Anyway, in all seriousness, don't be breathing this stuff. Cover your uh, air passages up and make sure that you're controlling the dust. You really don't want this laying around. I don't want to make a joke out of this. Now, back to the tools we'll need. Okay, we keep taking the guitar in and out of the scene, but look, I can take this little chisel that I have, and I can uh, 
file it down like this and I can use this to pop this stuff away but this stuff is very flaky you can see it and that's where the health hazard comes in so rather than flake it away and try to suck it up I am going to use this heat gun and melt this stuff away now you want to remember this stuff is flammable and if you use the heat gun uh, and the setting is too high you are actually going to ruin the varnish on your guitar so you have to be very careful with this but if you apply a little heat the stuff will ball up it will stick together and it will come off okay back to the tools remember we need the binding it'll have, have had to have been measured we need the binding adhesive we're going to need this tape that we use to put the binding to hold the binding in place you saw us use this in the hole repair um, and it basically kind of clamps the binding to the guitar I'm going to put that there again there are going to be links to that stuff down below in the resources section um, we're going to need a heat gun we don't want to use open flame a heat gun we're going to need a couple of razor knife things a box cutter is handy I like these box cutters because you can open that and lock it in place like so can you see that oh there we go um, and then I pop this up and put out what I want and lock it in place and I pull it back down and lock it in place there I've got this small chisel that matches the groove where the binding goes in the guitar um, you know they make routers and router attachments and bits to cut the binding groove in but we won't be doing that this time I want to make sure that I keep this uh, nice and sharp but this is a uh, a little something I picked up at an old estate sale I keep it around it's handy um, of course again our little guide for binding and then I've got this one I'm gonna have to trim off the top of the binding once it's on the guitar so what I did here was I just basically took a piece of rod I run it through the uh, bandsaw like this I put one of these uh, razor blade uh, like for a utility knife in there like that drilled a small hole right there with the same size bit that we use for tuner screws and then popped in one of our trademark chick flick teal screws and what this does is it allows us to put our hand back here and move along the curve of the body when it comes time to cut off the excess which is going to be up just a little bit from the body so it allows us to follow use the body as a guide and to cut that so these are the kinds of tools that we're going to need to do this job alright guys I picked this little section right here because it's kind of representative of what's happening on the guitar some of it over in here is a little bit more stable it's starting to crack out and and do what a celluloid binding does after a while but this part right here is kind of representative of what's going on now I take my little chisel it gives me a nice flat edge here and I want to make sure that I got that neck up there cradled it helps the guitar from going like this too much now I could just pop this here and look it wants to pop right out and that's where the hazard lies uh, this just flies all over it ends up being down here and over there and the next thing you know you're breathing it two years later and you don't even know it so check out the heat gun it's got a number of settings um, I've got it on three between three and four right now if you turn it on seven it heats it up very quickly remember this stuff is actually flammable and you will start to see if your heat is up too high you'll start to see the varnish start to discolor on the edge and that's an indicator that your heat is up too high but let's turn this on and I'll show you heating it up a little bit causes it to stick together and it kind of flakes off in better pieces and more manageable pieces again I've got this on a lower setting and we're going to be able to watch as I turn this on you're going to watch for color changes both here in the varnish and here as this stuff starts to melt itself together again if you have it up really high you're going to end up look at now it's sticking together and coming off better you see how that's working that can be heated up a little bit more so I can turn the heat up just a tad I don't want to be pointing it right at it as I'm going 
and turning the heat and not paying attention that I can heat this up and get these pieces to come off a little bit better. Okay, that came off good, so now I'm just going to walk right on down the line. Look, look at that. It's popping right off. As soon as it starts to crumble a little bit, slow down and let it get a little bit more heat. Because part of this is releasing the adhesive. There we go. See, it's starting to ball up there. That's what you want. That's what stops it from going out into the environment. Anyway, I'm going to go all the way around, take the binding off. You want to make sure that you don't have the strings tight here because this is kind of what helps hold the body to the top and bottom. So use care. Do not have it under tension. Okay, so if you look here now, I've gone all the way around this side of the bottom of the guitar from where the... Uh, strap button is all the way around here and removed all of this so now all the way up to the neck part here I'm not going to do the rest until I get this part glued in and I'm certainly not going to do the top and bottom you want to remember that as you're heating this up with one of these things that these things were put together with hide glue and if you get things too hot then things start to pop off and again that is why you don't want the guitar under tension when you do this but Remember our friend the template here. We're just going to make sure that that fits in there everywhere. We get a couple little rough spots here. We can take our file. And we don't want to be trying to file one little spot here. We want to be looking at this like the curvature. So if we get the bottom right, we can just go along like this. And filing a whole section is kind of like filing frets in a way. You're not trying to file one part of the fret trying to file across the whole thing and then you fine tune that later but you're doing this kind of thing here now we have our tool here that's going to come in handy uh, notice I didn't have any tape on here yet I don't want to have the tape uh, that we use to protect things like this up here to catch on fire when we're using our heat gun but remember this I can put my fingers back here. I don't want them up here ever. Put my hand back here and I can take this like so and put it against the body and use the body as a guide and gently run down like this. So anything that's sticking up like so will get taken down. I can also do it down here like so because this is riding the body. So I just tilt this this way and any little things that are sticking up there are going to get in the way. I can do that. Again, this little file or this little chisel comes in really handy and I'm just going along like this and making sure, see there's some little glue that's stuck there still and um, I can file that off. Again, protect yourself and you can tell as you follow the curvature of the top and come around like this, you'll know when you're okay and then this thing again will tell you don't lie to yourself and try to avoid this thing if it does not fit in there like right there that's perfect there's still a little bit of work to do right here like so and remember that's where that crack was it's better to turn this up and let the edge of the bottom of the body be your guide but as you pull this away works away very easily and then if this is right the binding job is going to be a lot easier anything that's sticking out is going to create binding sticking out and it won't be even this thing is tore up already and I don't mind it being uh, looking like it's been fixed and, and being a little bit rough that's what I'm known for but I like to make sure that this part is good so we got a little bit more to do there <sighs> All right, we are good to go. Okay, guys, couple housekeeping things. I have cut this stuff loose out of the roll you saw. It is big enough to go around the entirety of the guitar, each one of these strips. There's four of them, and that's enough to do the top and bottom 
of that loud motorcycle that's going by, the top and bottom of two guitars. Now, if I let this stuff flop all over the place, it's going to be hard to manage and it's going to be really hard to keep in the groove if this is up and down and all over the place and trying to twist. So, I've taped it up like this. I want to be able to lay it in the groove and yet I need something up here like this wonderful gnome to sit up there and keep it okay like that as I'm going around the guitar. Now I want to make everything come together right back here where the where the strap button is. So I put this piece of painter's tape and made a mark and I'm going to start the repair there and work all the way around the guitar. Again, I have this uh, wound up so I can stop somewhere along the way and let things dry. Uh, that's going to be critical around the curves and stuff. And I can feel on my fingers here that everything is okay. This is the last time if you've got the bottom of this binding sticking out a little bit, that's the time to get in here one last time and make sure everything's okay with your tools uh, and make sure it's right. Because if it's not, you're going to be doing a lot of work there. And every time you're doing work on the binding around the body is another step of making sure the body's protected. Last thing I want to show you is I've beveled the end of that. I don't want this to blunt when the other end comes in. I want to make a bevel like this and the other end when it comes in will be beveled the other way and I can work it and slip it with this being solid that this will fit underneath here and then sand it to where it looks it's almost unidentifiable. But this is where I'm going to start my repair right there. All right, here it is. Bind all guitar binding glue bonds wood. That's wood and plastic. Yeah, this is plastic. Now, we're just going to put this on here like so. And we're just going to squirt on there. Now, we don't want to do that. It does say that both surfaces need to be damp with the stuff. So we're going to need to put it here and here. Now, I am not going to gush it all over the place. But I think it's a good idea if I go right along there like that and protect that with this painter's tape like so. So I'm going to go around and prep it by doing that and that's really easy, see? A little bit more about the glue. Two minute working time. That means that this stuff is going to start to bind up. When you start getting into three minutes, it's going to be a problem. Uh, and you're not going to be able to do anything with it for 12 hours. So how are we going to clamp this together? Well, here's kind of what it looks like. We use this tape. This is very different than painter's tape. And we're going to just basically take a strip once we've got this where it needs to be and the stuff is in place. We just take this, hold it, and that's how you hold this in place like this. You're going to need a ton of this stuff. You don't just put one here and one here and then expect that this middle part is not going to blow out. So you're going to need to put this everywhere. And since this top of this binding is sticking up a little bit, you're going to constantly need to be pressing this down. I would do it here instead of starting here and then pulling it back and having this roll over. But if you push here and push down, you're going to do that. And that's what's going to hold your binding and tape in place. Now, you're going to need a ton of this stuff. So you're not going to be gluing and then stopping and doing that and ripping off another three inch piece. You are going to have this stuff readily available. Again, my friend, the gnome is holding the excess that's wrapped around up there. I put those towels up there. Look at that camera work. And I've got a piece of old neck cut off with a lot of these that's going to get me all the way over to here. All right, so we're going to have some water. We're going to have some rags. We're going to have some paper towels just in case there's something happening along the way. Again, we're going to have our tools that we needed to make sure everything's right. We're going to keep measuring along the way and make sure everything is fine. And now we're ready to pull back these couple of pieces here. We've got the bottom glue is going to run down. It's not going to levitate. And so we're going to take a little bit of this binder glue here and start at the mark. And notice it's gelatinous. Let's 
There we go. Again, take that beveled end down. The other end is going to slip in here. And we want to pull it past there a little bit, like so. And you can see that based on what's popping out there, how much you need to put in. You do, really don't want a ton of this stuff oozing out on the top or bottom because that's going to give you a bunch of cleanup to do. Okay, just remember the glue is not going to, uh, this tape is not going to stick to a bunch of wet stuff. So take your time getting the first part of it right. I'm going to hold this like this. I don't need this tape here anymore. And I'm just going to pop that down in there like so. And then we are going to take our tape here. Again, this is really critical that you get this first set where this is going to set first. Right in place. Yeah, I can feel that. That's nice and smooth. And we're just going to go along and leave a little gap like that. Again, I'm watching this adhesive pop up. I got two minutes. So it's not like using super glue. Super glue, you can definitely use super glue. It bonds this stuff to the wood. Um, but I like this working time. It's kind of like hide glue in a way. Now, you want to remember as you go around here, like so, you're going to have to have your gnome up there work with you a little bit. But these pieces of tape on this wood right away. And remember where you ran out of adhesive and keep ahead of that. You don't want to get all the way up to where your adhesive runs out and then have to pop it back up and wonder where it is. You can feel it getting sticky right there. You see it? I'm over to this area right here. Use a little bit less now. If I got a little gap where I'm seeing some air, it doesn't hurt to push it in there like so. I don't want to have this ending up all over the place by not putting a lid on. And I just get a little bit of paper towel like that and drop that in. There we go. I don't think you want to watch me do all the rest of it, but I do think you're going to want to see how this turns out. So I'll get back with you in a bit once I've got it all the way up to where the neck meets the body. All right, guys, I lied. I didn't stop halfway up the neck uh, on where the binding meets the neck up here. I went all the way around and now it is 24 hours later. So our bind all, remember, said uh, two minutes working time, cure time, 12 hours. So we're way past that. Now comes the moment of truth where we're going to look at. We know that the binding is a little bit taller than, uh, than in other words, it's going to stick up a little bit past the body. So we're going to have to do some work there. But the part that is most critical is in these tight curves where this radius is really tight whether or not the binding stuck to there so let's zoom in and go right to a trouble spot right away okay let's do this as it happens pull this tape off here okay here's the moment of truth let's see what it looks like in the camera yeah it's seated really well right there there's a nice curve and um, it didn't pull back at all let's go to the other side where maybe you can see that a tad better make sure it was all right if these came out like that the rest of it is okay yeah, you're seeing it from this side now it sat down in there real nice that looks good 
and um, I'm happy with that. All right, guys, I am going to take a few minutes and get the rest of this tape off, and then we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to have to do to finish off this binding, but I'm really happy with what I'm seeing thus far. So let me get this off here without wasting your time, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, um, I am really happy with the way this turned out. There's no significant gaps anywhere here. A little bit of glue cleanup to do, that'll be easy. Um, but I've had professional luthiers tell me this is one of the worst possible jobs you can do. Um, I didn't find it that bad. Now, we'll see what happens when it comes time to take this uh binding it sticking up down to the level of the body. We're going to have some setup to do to protect that, but um, we're going to do that in the next episode so you can all have a look at that. Um, you know, I think there, there's been some heroes of the episode. Um, to start off with Craig Clemens and his idea about having proper lighting. Yeah, all you, dude. Next, I think this little chisel I got on an estate sale a few years ago was pretty handy and I think that the time I put in with this little piece of binding um, that we deburred and put a screw in and use it as a gauge all the way around uh, the whole repair had I not done that and made sure that everything was level and smooth I don't think this would have turned out the way it did. Next somebody encouraged me a long time ago when they saw me using a match uh, to do shrink wrap on an episode called uh, How to Wire a Pickup, right up there, right about now, um, that I should get one of these. And I finally got one. I think this one, uh, using a, a heat gun to soften up the old binding was a real time saver and made it for a lot less work uh, with the sanding and the prep. Um, and then you know, we always hear, well, that one company, they're very expensive and blah, 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 well, time is money sometimes. And I think that I do have to compliment Stumac on the binding. Um, it's uniform. It's not wavy. Um, the quality control in the product is good. The height and thickness is uniform all the way around. Um, it wasn't brittle. It worked well. As long as I kept the room temperature right, that was a good thing. Um, this tape, same source. This really, really made a difference. It held the binding into the radiuses there and that kind of thing like that. And this bind all um, guitar binding glue was really, really good stuff. Um, the stuff that did ooze out, I'm able to cut it off good. And um, yeah, good stuff. So shout out to Stumac uh, for these products. And of course, I'm going to give you a link below. So that's it for this time. I'm glad you stayed with me. This was a long episode. I know that. I hope it helped you out. And we'll be looking forward to watching me hopefully not screw up getting this binding down. The future of this guitar holds this binding being done on the on the front side. And then we're going to hot rod this thing up with some pick, uh, pick up and, and do what we usually do. And it'll be a screamer. So uh, subscribe if you haven't. Give me a like and I'll see you next time.